Hello, everybody. Welcome to our show. I'm probably a little bit early. Oh, I'm a minute early or 30 seconds early or something. It's not quite 7.30 yet, but not to worry. Let's chat. Hello, Diana. Hello, Lorraine. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Pamela. Nice to see you here. Hello, Maureen. Oh, did you all miss me? Did you all miss Hannah? Because I can tell you I really, really missed you guys. And it was only... Well, was, I had other things to do because we were away, but boy, it felt odd on Tuesday night and then again on Thursday night to not be talking to you all on YouTube. It's just quite weird. Never mind. We're back now. We had a really nice time. We evaded bushfires, just survived the wind. Thank goodness, because I'm not a fan of wind. Had a really fun time with our friends, laughed a lot. I've laughed so hard just that every day I cried. It was just, we just had a really, really good time. But we did pull the pin and come home early because of the weather. Not to worry. Bushfires here, I just checked before and where we were. Um, They're still um, evacuating um, bushwalkers and campers from those areas. So and the little surrounding villages and towns are on, I think it's a watch and act alert. So not so good for so early in the season, but of course it's nothing compared to what's been going on in New South Wales and Queensland. So we are blessed. Hello, Annette. Hello, Estelle. Hello, Narelle. Uh, who else have we got? Let me see. Julie, Kerry. Yeah, we made it back safe, Kerry. We limped back home, you know, we always limp back home exhausted. Well, I don't know why it's more tiring to go away than it is to stay home, but it is. Um, Freya's here. Hi, Barb. Um, it's nice to see you here. So, yeah. And Jodie, hello, Jodie. Jodie says hello. Hannah's waving. You can't see her, but she's waving. She's put her hand across, doesn't she? Oh, there's a hand. You can see a hand. Oops, she's moved it. She's playing Heidi's. So, yep, yeah, yeah, Kerry, we do need a holiday to get over the holiday. Mm. I came home and I will explain. We came home early because it was, as everything we do is, you know, it's a circus. It, my life is a circus. You, you've seen it firsthand. You've witnessed what my life is like. It's a circus. So we went away. First day, we all met to go into the bush to the hut that we were going to stay at and we had to cross a river, which is fine because we've all crossed rivers before except that one of the guys got stuck in the middle. So he flooded his truck. That's fine. Towed him out, let the water out, started. It was fine. Thank goodness. That was day one. Second day, we took off and we're moving on to our next campsite and we had to go across the river again. Yeah. Sean made it through, no problem. And But out of the river, there was sort of a steep bank and it had a bit of a rocky step thing. So we went up the step and there was this big bang. The people behind us, our friends behind us, got stuck. So we went back to help them. As we walked up, I went, oh, no, Wayne, no, 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 Wayne, no, come. flat tyre. So that bang as we came down on that rock step was the sidewall of a brand new tyre giving way. So we had to change the tyre. That's us. Uh, third day, our trip leader had some issue with his gearbox or transfer case. It was leaking oil. So he moved to the back and we took over as trip leaders And because normally November is our trip, the trip that we lead, but we didn't do it this year. And so we took over so that he could be between a couple of vehicles in case he got stuck. And that was the third day. The fourth day, one of the other young fellows, Went through a creek, got water in his electrics. Water and electricity don't work, apparently. you think they'd seal these cars up better, but anyway. 
So we spent some time fiddling around with him. Fifth day. Ah, big day, the fifth day. Huge day, the fifth day, because uh, one of the guys we were just coming down the hill into La Cola and one of the fellows said, oh, there's something wrong with my steering. So it pays to go away with mechanics because we have mechanics, we have diesel mechanics, motor mechanics, all sorts of people with us. They were able to fix it. That was okay. So we spent some time talking to the people at the La Cola shop like we always do. We had ice cream because it was warm. Got back in and we were heading back up towards, um, we're going to drop down into a little place that we just love, heading back up the road. And the same guy went, oh, something wrong, something really wrong. And it turned out he had major mechanical issues. So they did a roadside, I think it's called Bush Mechanics type fix for him, turned around and we went to the nearest spot to camp, which was only, oh, thank goodness, only about 200 metres down the road. And so we were there while they did a, a really big fix on his car and that meant that we called a halt to the trip because it wasn't safe for him to go any further. So then we had to turn around and come home early on Friday, which is what we did. Thank goodness, because we got home, unpacked, we were a bit tired, kids came in from work, we were yada, 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 Went, I collapsed into bed exhausted, got up on Saturday and we were puttering around, Hannah went to the outside freezer and I went, Mom, the freezer's not working. Oh, my gosh, and that freezer was jam-packed full. In fact, before I went away, I actually sat one of the big fire logs on the top of it to keep it closed till everything had frozen so that it would stay. Oh, oh my goodness. So then we had to empty that big freezer, rearrange the other freezers to get as much as we could back into them. And then I spent Saturday night cooking. Because what do you do when you have a whole heap of thawed meat? <coughs> you either eat it or you cook it so you can refreeze it. So I cooked it so we could refreeze it. So we've eaten some of it. We had chicken wings, we had drumsticks, we had burgers. burgers, we had chicken fillets, a lot of chicken, wasn't it? That we had to that I had to be used up because that was properly thawed. I didn't want to refreeze it. The rest of it I just cooked up into meals, refroze it, parceled it up and refroze it. And Wayne had a fiddle around and we don't know what was wrong with the freezer, but it's working now. I won't trust it again. We will probably get rid of that freezer, I'd say, just because I'm a bit, a bit nervous about filling it up. But use anyway, it for drinks on Christmas Day, and we'll get rid of it. Yeah, we might use it for drinks on Christmas Day, Christmas, New Year's, and um, get rid of it. It was my mum's freezer, that freezer, and I think it was secondhand when she got it. About, well, I've been married 31 years, so oh. it was must be coming out 40 years I think it was second hand when she got it so it's done really really well but never mind hello and hi Anne Marie hi Anne oh. it was an action packed trip Annette hello Priya hello Coralie hello Yvonne Yvonne Martian I love that that's so see I'm not the only one that does things like that uh okay so there you go so i spent saturday night cooking and cleaning up after the cooking that was that's the worst part isn't it never mind we managed to rearrange it and in the process we updated the inventory and we won't need meat for about five years well maybe not that long but a long time probably a good six to eight months will be fine for me after we've updated the inventory has gone through all the freezers meat and chicken we're done so that will be good yes kerry i bought my pressure canner i can't wait to get started i'm a little bit nervous i'm going to start really small with canning meats and casseroles and soups and things but that will be my summer project i think so yeah uh, did you do that, Han? Thank yeah. you. Oh, sorry, Estelle, yeah, catch up. Not much, you know, just a circus. The life, My life is a circus. Maureen, we didn't lose anything because we 
I rearranged our meal plan. So instead of whatever was on the meal plan for this week, it's got rearranged and I've been using up the meat that had to be used up. Yes. We got rid of the ice and bowls. Oh, yeah, but that wasn't meat. Oh. We had some um, some of those icy poles. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me have a drink. Some of those icy poles on the stick, the ones from Aldi, um, that had gone, that had melted. So we tossed those. Oh, you know, it's $2, I think they're $2.99 a box or something. So mm -hmm. it was no great loss, oh. but they were, um, they were no great loss. But I did... We, we are eating or ate eating what I couldn't freeze. Everything else, I just spent hours cooking, making curries, pasta sauce, chicken schnitties to crumb and whatever. Yeah, pasta bag, you know, we made it and got it all back into the freezers. So thank goodness. Uh, yeah, Glennis, yes, we did have freezer trouble with, no, we're not really sure when it happened. It would only have been probably two, three days because the bottom layer was probably could have frozen. Been Thursday, the power went out and ran to you on Thursday. Hannah says it might have happened on Thursday. The power went out on Thursday. It would have gone out in the wind, yeah. yeah. So I wasn't home, so I don't know. But it was Thursday, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That was probably the top one, two, about the top four layers that weren't still rock solid. Everything on the bottom was absolutely rock solid, so we just straight away moved that into the other freezers. And anything else, I decided whether it was going to be an eat or a cook and freeze. So that's what we did. Estelle, you can make icy poles with with whatever you, anything that holds um, holds the liquid. It doesn't have to be a particular icy pole mold anything round or oblong or whatever holds the liquid can be used to make icy poles and if you want to put a stick in it you can buy the um icy pole sticks at two dollar shops um or you can buy um the lollipop like on the chopper chops and the lifesaver lollipops those round lollipop sticks if you want to make smaller ones use those whatever anything that um will hold the the milk or the fruit juice or the cordial or whatever you're freezing will um, do for icy pole moulds. Yeah. Oh, Kerry, I saw that Kerry's put up 28 um, single tomato paste today. Yes. I saw that you were making that. I was watching this afternoon. Um and I saw the freezers on special at um, Aldi this week. Um, yeah. Pamela, the icebox trays are good for little ones, and little ones are really good for kids. And, you know, um, sometimes you can get the silicon ice block trays and they're in shapes. Like I've got ones that are unicorn shape and we've got teddy bears and also that I use for soap to make the soaps. But... They're good for making little icy poles too. So, yeah. Hello, Judy. We did enjoy our break. Thank you very much. Old KFC potato and gravy containers to make ice for the dog's water. That's a good idea, Narelle. Yep. And Barb has officially finished Christmas shopping and gifts for next year and most of her gifts are wrapped. Well done. Okay, so I suppose we need to get on to tonight's topic, yep. which is how to stick to your shopping list or to your grocery budget. How to stick to your grocery budget. Oh, I'm, I'm going to lose my notes. Never mind. So I had to laugh because I was doing some research on this topic just to puff out my notes a bit because sometimes my notes can be a bit sparse. Mm -hmm. And I was going through the forum and one of our, our lovely ladies, Susan, said the biggest thing, the biggest help to her sticking to her grocery budget was to shop alone. Now, that's an old tip that has been around for a gazillion years to, to, to shop on your own. And it makes sense if you can do it. I could never do it. I always had at least one child with me. 
um, when the three, I had to take the three of them, I'd shop on a Thursday night and make Wayne come and we put the kids in one trolley and I'd do the groceries and he'd just tag along behind me, which was really good because then he could carry the bags and stuff for me. But when you've got little kids and you're trying to juggle it, you often can't shop alone, but if you can, it works. It really works because you're not distracted and you don't have little people or even bigger people pointing out to you that um, look at that, that's on sale or can we have this biscuit or we haven't tried this, we haven't tried this cheese or whatever it is. So you're not tempted quite as much then. The other old tip that it was never a problem for me but is to not shop while you're hungry. Well, I never shopped while I was hungry anyway because I never had time. It was always sort of my, I like to do my shopping early in the morning, get in, get out over and done with. Uh, these days it's usually about between 11 and 11.30 when I get to um, buy the milk and bread but I'm not hungry it's just the way it goes so they're two old tips but Susan really made me laugh when I was rereading the forum post and she said the best thing she ever did was shop alone. So I used to shop until a couple of years ago I shopped once a month for absolutely everything once a month. That was it. I would buy the milk, I'd buy the bread, I'd buy the cheese, absolutely everything, even the fruit and vegetables. And it was probably a big day. It was probably two and a half hours at the shops and then probably another hour to put it all the way at home. That was it then for the month. And I did not go back to the super. If we ran out of something, I had to make do with what we had. I did not go back to the shops to buy food. And I did that because we didn't have the money. I didn't have the money to go back to the shops. I had, for a long time, our grocery budget was $200 a month. Up until hmm, probably about maybe eight years ago, our grocery budget was $200 a month. Just think, how long have you been out of school? Seven years. Six years. Six years. So about seven years ago, our grocery our grocery budget was two hundred dollars a month, and I made it I made it work. It had to work because we were paying school fees, we had sports to do, we had all sorts of things, additional expenses to draw on our budget. So groceries were minimal. It worked. Going once a month, over and done with. And if I missed out on a special, I missed out on a special. I didn't have much of a slush fund in those days because there just wasn't the money in our budget to do it. And there's lots of families like that that just don't have that extra $5, $10 or whatever. So you have to make it work. So some of the things that I did, and I still do them, because while things are easier for us now, just because I could doesn't mean I should. And it certainly doesn't mean I need to. And, yes, I am more extravagant in my groceries now than I was when we had three lots of school fees to pay and all sorts of stuff like that. But I still don't, we still don't spend a lot on food. We eat really well. We just don't spend a lot on it, if that makes sense. So, firstly, remember, I've had a lot of practice at doing this. I have been doing this since 1993. So that's uh, 16 years. No. 1993? Yeah, 16 years. 1993? Oh, 20, 26 years. Yes. 26 years I've been doing this. My math is terrible. I need to go on a holiday. Sorry, folks. Um, since 1993. I've been doing this since 1993. So, ooh, roasted pumpkin chicken and ricotta cannelloni. Oh, Kerry's having cannelloni for dinner tonight. Sorry, I just read that comment. I've been doing this since 1993. So if I skip over something, ask a question. If you've got a question, put it in um, all caps so it stands out for us and we'll see it and I'll try to answer it. Um, because once something becomes a habit, you tend to just you take it for granted that everybody knows it and they don't. All right. So I always, even just... Now when I do my weekly top-up, which is usually just bread and milk, 
but I always go through the pantry, the fridge and the freezer just to make sure everything's on track. And if there's anything we desperately need, I add it to my shopping list. I always have a shopping list, even if it just has bread on it. It's a list so I can stick to my list. It's really important to have a list with what you need so that you are not distracted. You might forget things, but you're more likely to be distracted and add extras when you don't have a list. So always shop with a shopping list, whether it's a piece of paper, whether it's on your phone, whether it's um, you're going to use the one in your planner, in your 2020 planner, whatever, always shop with a list. The next thing I do, and you are familiar with, I meal plan. Now, these days, I meal plan for a year ahead, and I've already done 2020's meal plan. So it's already done, worked out. And that's pretty easy for me to do simply because I buy pretty much the same stuff all the time. I discovered back in 1993 that it didn't matter what we ate, most of what we ate used pretty much the same basic ingredients, the flour, the sugar, the butter, the eggs, the cocoa, the coconut, the rice, the garlic, the mixed herbs, onions, potatoes, carrots, whatever, pretty much used all those basic ingredients. So if I have a good variety of basics in my pantry, I can make just about anything. So it's really easy for me then to plan ahead and I can do it. You'll notice my, our meal plan is pretty boring. Sunday is always a roast. And I alternate chicken, beef, chicken, lamb, chicken, beef, chicken, lamb. Very boring. Tuesday is always a pasta dish of some kind, spag bowl, um, ravioli, pasta bake, um, carbonara, lasagna. lasagna. Mm, excuse me, now I've got the hiccups. Um, like that. And Thursday night is always pizza. Always pizza because the boys make it. I don't. I don't like pizza, so I don't have it. So that's an easy meal. So it's always pizza. So there's three dinners every week automatically done for me. So filling in the other four was easy because Monday nights usually the leftovers, something leftovers with the rice. If we have had chicken on Sunday night, we might have sweet and sour chicken, we could have curry chicken, we could have chicken rissoles, it might be chicken fried rice, something like that. I meal plan it that way. If it's lamb it could be sweet lamb curry it could be um french shepherd's pie whatever that sort of thing wednesday night used to be hannah's late work night so we used to always have something spicy um mexican something with chili or or um a spicy asian food? spicy asian food or something like that on wednesday night so that she didn't have to eat it because she doesn't like spicy food now it's usually some sort of casserole or rissole, something like that. Friday night, depends, could be anything. Saturday night, I always choose an easy meal. So, um, And for me, an easy meal isn't toasted sandwiches. I don't think toasted sandwiches is an easy meal. It's a complicated meal. It takes a lot of work to make toasted sandwiches. It's not quick and easy. So that's a full-on other night meal but it could be something like um soup and toast that's much easier than than toasted sandwiches scrambled eggs um haystacks something like that so doing the meal plan is really quite easy and because i know we've got basic ingredients and my shopping list shows those basic ingredients i can work out a meal plan with what we have and i'm not adding to the grocery budget um so when I write my shopping list, I've mentioned this before and I was going to, I haven't got, uh, I haven't got copies. I'll have to scan them. I have a winter shopping list and a summer shopping list. Is this for the fruit and veg or for everything? For everything. Because, as I said, we pretty, the basics are pretty much the same, but they change slightly from summer to winter. In summer, we use more tinned pineapple.
that sort of beetroot, um, that sort of thing. In winter, I tend to use uh, tomato soup, cream of chicken soup, maybe those things a bit more. So they feature more on the winter list and less on the summer list and vice versa. If I can scan my lists in, I'll post them over on the website um, so you can see them, although they're my list. So you'll see what I do. Unless you eat what we eat, then that's not going to be much use to you, but you'll see how they work. In winter, we use more rolled oats, so there's less rolled oats in the summer list and more cold cereal, more wheat mix and rices, that sort of thing. Mm. Uh, right, okay. So when I'm writing my shopping list, I do my inventory, check off the meal plan, um, look online these days. I was so disappointed when Aldi took down their I think it's back shopping up. list with the prices. I oh, know you can make a shopping list. You can make a look. shopping list, but it's not the same. The Aldi shopping list with the prices was just brilliant. It was so, so easy to use. I was devastated when they took it down. So I write my shopping list and I have the item, the size, the quantity and the price. And I get those from my price book. The price, the last price I paid comes from my price book. So I know. And then as I'm jotting around, I can do a rough total and know roughly how much it's going to cost me. When I go to the shop, I use a pencil to put in the new price. So I use my price book for things like that. Not so much tracking the changes of prices these days because I pretty much found where the cheapest ones are unless it's a really good sale, but helping me to stay on track with the grocery budget. And the other thing, don't be brand loyal. Don't be brand loyal. If you're worried about your grocery budget and there's a cheaper brand of something that you use, Try it. Buy one, try it. If you don't like it, you can go back to using your regular brand. Just wait till it comes on sale and buy up until the next sales cycle starts again. The brands aren't loyal to you. So loyalty is sort of a two-way street when it comes to, I think, when it comes to our family and our family finances. If brands are going to be loyal to me and keep their price low, their quality consistent, then I'm happy to stick with them. But if they start going down in quality and up in price, then I'm going to look for something else that fits within my budget because my budget doesn't do that. My budget is pretty static and most people's is. So we don't have we're pretty much, in fact, I don't think I know anyone personally who isn't on a limited income of some kind. So I don't have an unlimited income, so I have to stick to my budget. You don't have an unlimited income, you have to stick to your budget. So don't be afraid to try the other brands and by all means try generics. Now, you can look at where they're made, you can look at what's in them, that's important. But when you are on, a, are on a really tight budget, you have no option but to do the best you can with your money. And if that means you have to, for a little while, buy something that you find morally reprehensible, then you do it. You do what you have to do. It's more important to put food in your children's tummies than it is to buy Australian organic produce. Trust me. I'll get off my high horse, but really. And don't get me started on organics. Mm -hmm. All right. So, all right, what are we up to? Okay. Once you've done all that, <laughs> out the door to the shops, grab your trolley, whip around, pack your bags, bring it home, put it away, and you've done your grocery shopping. Keeping a track of the prices as you go around the supermarket, you won't be shocked when you get to the register. You will know if you've gone over your budget and therefore you can choose to put something back or choose a cheaper brand so that you come in under budget. There should be no excuse. There should be no reason and there is no excuse for going over grocery budget if you are very careful. Yes, it takes time. 
Guys, we all have the same 24 hours in the day. It's how we use them that makes a difference. It doesn't take any longer to do that than it does to walk around willy-nilly, throwing things in the trolley, getting to the checkout, realising you've gone over budget and having to work an extra hour, an extra two hours to earn the money, to pay for what you've overspent. The choice is yours. I would rather take the extra five to ten minutes in the supermarket to shop carefully than work the extra two hours. It's a lifestyle choice. Okay, so. So Glenis, yep, black and I could never come at black and gold. Glenis just couldn't, but I have no problem with um, Coles and Woolies, the red and white Woolies and the you'll love Coles or whatever it is these days. And often you will find someone has to make those products. The biggest eye opener for me was Meadow Lee Margarine. We had because I grew up with Meadow Lee Margarine. When I was growing up, that was what everyone used, Meadow Lee Margarine. It was the most popular margarine in Australia and supposedly so good for you, uh, yada, yada, yada. So when we got married, I kept buying Meadow Lee until, and it was thankfully not long into my marriage, my brother actually told me that at the time it was Jewel. The Jewel Margarine was just repackaged or rebranded Meadow Lee. And that's when it clicked with me Someone has to make this stuff. It has to come from somewhere. So check where it's made. If it's made in Australia, it's got to be here somewhere. It'll be some well-known brand, you know. Sanitarium packages a lot, lots of off-brand cereals, um, mm -hmm. things like that. So it has to come from somewhere. The other thing to remember is that in Australia, we don't import sugar. We don't import flour. So if you're buying... Um, CSR sugar, you're paying more for the name. You're not getting an Australian product that's better quality. You're just paying for the CSR name. So you can buy no name sugar. Ditto with the flour. If you're buying white wings plain flour, white wings self-raising, you can buy Aldi, Coles, Woolies plain label flour for a third of the price. It's way less than half the price. It's still Australian. So think about those things. Butter, yogurt, don't buy yogurt, make it. Go and watch my how to make yogurt video. It's so easy. Those sorts of things. Read the label. You do need to be very careful with your butter. Uh, at the moment, Coles has butter. The packages look identical. One, for some reason, and they're the same size, for some reason one is cheaper than the other. When we picked it up to look at it, the cheap one actually comes from New Zealand. You actually have one of those in the fridge. Do I? I picked it up by mistake. Um, now, I have no I have no problem with supporting New Zealand if our own dairy farmers weren't struggling. But our own dairy farmers are struggling. So, you know, for the want of 40 cents, that to me, I will keep buying the Australian butter. But as I said, for us right now, finances are easier. It depends. If your finances are that tight, then you can't do that and you shouldn't feel guilty about it. And no one should make you feel guilty about it either. You do what you have to do to keep food on your table and in your children's bellies. Please. Maureen said black and gold lollies are Alan's brand. Thank you, Maureen. Oh, do black and gold make spearmint leaves? We've got some. We've got spearmint leaves, yes. I was just wondering because I like spearmint leaves. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. um, black and gold chocolate. Chocolate very is cat Sarah cat. Lee. Yes, the old jewel one used to be Sarah Lee too. And it was really nice. And it was when we first got married, it was a dollar ninety-nine for the little black and it was the jewel um chocolate Bavarian. It was so good. Anyway, so Barb says she doesn't, she's brand loyal on a few things, including your favourite tea bags, but you get them on half price bag, uh Barb. Don't mind me, you get them on half price. So if that's what works for you, I buy my tea on half price. I'm a coffee snob. There is one brand of coffee that I like, instant coffee that I like. I only buy it when it's on um, sale and I will buy two or three at a time. Right now I think I have enough in the cupboard to last us about 16 months because it's something I enjoy. 
I don't drink a lot of coffee anymore, so if I'm going to drink it, I want to enjoy it. And to me, there's nothing quite as bad as bad coffee. And the same with my pods for the um, machine. I wait till they're on sale at Aldi and then I stock up. I miss Jewel too, Kerry, and Franklin's. Oh, I loved Franklin's. <laughs> yes, Estelle, and we didn't have dollar coins, I don't think. I think the dollar coin or the $2, $2 came in first, I think, um, came in after we were married. We still had the notes, brown, brown for the dollar, green for the $2. Uh, now, your one and two cent coins are still legal, legal tender. And if you have a jar of them like we do stashed away somewhere, you can take them to the bank and cash them in. What can you take to the bank? Um, the one and two cent copper coins, which disappeared before you were born. But we have quite a few of them around okay. somewhere. Yeah. I think uh, they're in the wardrobe. Right. So, hello, Meryl. Um, Meryl emailed about salt recipes. They're coming up. I will send them to you, but they will be coming up. With Hannah's flavoured salts, we will be doing a tip sheet on them. Okay. We talked about it. We talked about it the other day. You didn't say salt. You just said salt. Oh, well, you know, the ones. We'll be doing a tip sheet on it. I'll let you know. But it will be on the website, so you'll be able to zip over and download it. Okay, so... It doesn't matter the size of your family. So we're a family of five, five adults now. You could be a family of six or 20 or just a single or a couple. You could have a blended family so that some nights there's two of you and sometimes there's four of you and other times there's 10 of you. It doesn't matter. Your grocery budget's a grocery budget and you have to stick to it. So the process sticking to it is exactly the same do your inventories do your meal plan write your shopping list hit the shops if you can go alone well done although it is more fun taking someone to carry the heavy bags these days um bring it home get it packed away it's it's what it is it's so much easier to do that um and track your prices it's really important now i was i can't remember someone emailed me about the price book and she was having trouble with her price book because she because she wasn't entering the prices in well who was that don't say the name oh, i can't remember but anyway it was just, i just got it today so when you do your price book it is important for the first probably three months to be faithful at entering the prices and you do that so that not only so you can um, see how much you paid for something, but it allows you to track the sales cycle. And you'll see when each store has whatever on sale because, the, well, you've got Coles, Woolworths, IGA all seem to run in a cycle of either four or six weeks, depending on what it is. If it's not on sale at one store, guaranteed within the next week or two it'll be on sale at another one you'll be able to buy it then. So track your prices faithfully. Just for, It is a bit of a pain to set it up because you have to enter the prices. It can't be done automatically. Unfortunately, you actually have to do it. So use some TV time or some downtime before you go to sleep or something and do it. Sit on the train and enter your prices if you want to into your price book. You'll a few minutes here and a few minutes there and it'll get done. And then when you go shopping, it's so much easier to do your shopping list with the prices and also to know where to go to get the cheapest ones because you don't always have to just shop at the one store. You can do some here, do some there, do some there. And I do the bulk of our groceries at Aldi. There are some things I get at Coles and the fruit and veg always comes from Pellegrinos. My meat comes from Australian Butcher. Uh, it used to come from Tasman, now Australia, and now I go to Australian Butcher because they're closer. Tasman, I actually have to go out of my way and it's a 15 to 20 minute drive, whereas Australian Butcher is only 10 minutes away. It all makes a difference and it makes a difference in your time, the time that you spend too, and your time management because time management is important because, folks, time is money. 
and you don't want to be working to earn if, if you can't enjoy the off time. So works for PFD and they make Meadow Lee and Woolworths own brand. Yep. Olive oil, margarine. Cool. Uh, right. Kerry, Mrs. Jules, I do too. How do you track sales cycles on a once a month shop? Same way, Estelle. You still keep a track of your, right, how often you shop is irrelevant to tracking the sales cycle. Keep your receipts if you want to go through and enter them in, but look online for the specials brochures. If you get them in your letterbox, bring them in, go through for the things that you buy, add them to your price book, and you'll track the sales cycle that way. Um, Okay, so what else have I missed? Sorry. We have someone new. Who's new? Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Welcome. School age children, six and eight, and would love to know what types of school lunches you used to make for your children to keep costs down. Okay, my boys, boring as dishwater, dull as dishwater when it came to school lunches. Bread roll. It had either Vegemite or honey on it. They would take mini muffins. I would give them two mini muffins and a mandarin. That was the boys' school lunches. Miss Hannah, on the other hand, had a gourmet feast. Her brain food in the morning was usually carrot sticks, celery, capsicum slivers. She loved that for brain food. Her lunches would be uh, muffin pizzas, cheese and veggie rolls, salad roll, salad in a container. She loved taking a salad in a container and that was just lettuce, tomato, a little bit of cheese, um, some cucumber. If I threw in capsicum, she was in heaven. In a little dish with a lid on it, she thought that was great. No dressing because she didn't like it. So that was really good. She was never really fond of the muffins and things for desserts and she would have a mandarin or similar for her fruit. They always took a frozen bottle of water to school for their lunches. In winter, they would have mm, pretty much the same, really, all year round. Sometimes it would be a wrap. Occasionally it would be a focaccia. For Miss Hannah, the boys, just the bread roll and the mandarins, two mini muffins, that was it. That was them right through until the end of high school. Uh, I think Thomas in year 12 was buying his lunch and it was a sausage roll in a roll, which used to just make me gag thinking about it. And this oh, was nice. after the healthy school lunch program came in. It was a sausage roll in a roll. How can that possibly be healthy? You need to try but, it. No, I don't think it is good. It sounds it sounds so doughy. It no. sounds terrible. So little things like that. Popcorn. I tried um, when they're in preschool, it was easier because I could do my own lunchables, you know, those lunchables that you get in the little packs. So I do little cheese cubes and some um, crackers, so either single sayos, uh, single saltines or um Ritz or Jacks or something like that and then some Sultanas and it might be some sort of chicken or ham or something like that chopped up for them and I just put it in little they were bento boxes before bento boxes became fashionable just little divided lunch boxes put a lid on it they had their own lunchables they liked those Hannah would take yogurt in a little container so I would freeze it in summer so it was thawed by lunchtime for her. Um, disposable spoons because you just never get the spoons back. Never get the spoons back. And I know it's going to add to landfill, but seriously, it saves an awful lot of angst if you can give them things that if they don't come home, it's not quite such a drama. So don't spend a lot of money on expensive lunch boxes and little containers and stuff because they do get lost. It's not worth it. Um, 
popcorn. I would pop popcorn and give it to them. Sometimes I'd make caramel corn and give it to them. But that was pretty much it, wasn't it? Yeah, that was pretty much it. Lunches keep. I think we overthink the lunch problem with our children because we look at what the other mothers are doing and go, oh, my goodness, I must be starving my child. But let your kids guide you. Have they told you they're bored with their lunch? Are they bringing it home not eating, not eating? If they bring it home, ask them why. Now, it might be that they simply don't have time to eat everything you've given them, that you're giving them too much. Or it could be that um, they don't like it. They're, oh, they're sick of whatever you're giving them. They'd like a change. So then you can mix it up. But don't, don't give them too much because kids get 10 to 15 minutes to eat their lunch and then they want to go and play. They don't want to be the child left sitting in the classroom eating this massive meal that mum's packed for them while all their friends are outside playing. So, you know, think about that. I worry dreadfully when, when my kids started school that they would be hungry all the time because they seemed to eat all the time. They were grazers in the morning. So from when they got up to lunchtime, they sort of would have breakfast and they might have a piece of fruit, then they might have a bit of cheese, then they could have some yogurt, then they have their lunch, which they can't do at school. So I worried that they'd be starving. Yeah, they weren't. They survived. So ask your kids. They're six and eight. They're old enough to tell you what they like and what they don't like. And perhaps, you know, it could be something as simple as giving them crackers and dip that they can gulp down quickly so they can go and play with their friends. You probably need to be guided to. We didn't have this so much when the kids were at school, but need to be guided to by the school um rules and regulations for eating and what goes into lunch boxes but I taught our kids that they had to they couldn't share food because not everyone could eat what they ate and it was never an issue for us number one son is allergic to peanuts we taught him from from when he was just a few well probably about six months old we started with the he was aware that he couldn't have peanuts or anything that had been near a peanut he would ask. Um, he would ask if someone offered him something or if there was a food that he wasn't familiar with, he would ask if it had peanuts in it or if it had been near peanuts because he knew he would get sick. Perhaps we, um, you know, so teaching our kids to be aware of things like that helps too. Sorry, off my high horse again. Um, there we go. Now. Right, my kids like homemade pizza rolls, sausage rolls, sandwiches, wraps, mini muffins, fruit. Yep. Yeah. At six and eight, they could pack their own lunches. Something you don't have to do. Now, over on the Cheapskates Club website, you will find the inventories I was talking about, the freezer inventory, the fridge inventory, the pantry inventory. Um, you'll be able to um, download the price book pages if you want to set up your own price book. They're all over on our website for you. Um, easy to use, pretty straightforward really. Print them off. Now, for your inventories, laminate them so that you don't have to keep printing them off. So um, download it, fill it in with the items, then laminate it and then just use a whiteboard marker to um, check off as you need to. Then you can just clean it off and start again from scratch when you want it, when it's full. You don't have to keep printing it. If you don't have a laminator, get contact, contact, clear contact, or two clear plastic bags, two sheets of foil, put a piece of foil on your ironing board, put a piece of plastic down, put your sheet down, plastic foil, iron over the foil. It will, the heat will um, seal the plastic to the edges and you'll have a laminated sheet. Um, hi, Joy. Uh, Joy, Joy's school, Joy, Joy works at a lovely school and they do have fruit for their kids, which is really nice, I think. 
Wow. No, kids don't starve. Do you know, a paediatrician friend told me when I was concerned about Thomas wasn't eating much and he just seemed to be off his food and he just wouldn't eat and he wasn't hungry and he, it was a bit of a drama. But anyway, paediatrician friend told me he would be incapable of actually starving himself because eventually he'd get hungry and he would eat something. He would find something to eat, which actually worked out. Um, most kids will do that. So if they're hungry, they'll eat what you've given them. If they're not hungry, they'll bring it home. But you need to ask them what they want, what they don't want, what they like, what they don't like. And also kids' taste change. Like they get to school and things that they've never eaten before they see other kids eating and so all of a sudden they want to eat it or something they've always liked the other kids won't eat so now they won't touch it contrary little blighters they are but we have them we always have them freezing yogurt works really well sarah really really well it's like what like the go -gets. like a go -get. I forgot about those. those the, oh, yeah, those we used to get them at NQR. So that's the other thing. A lots of um, little ideas like that. Um, what are the other things? Well, I don't know what they're called. With the crackers and the cream cheese, you know, just in the. Oh, I don't know, but you can get them in boxes, and they come in packs of six, and you've got in three crackers. Room three crackers and a little bit of cheese and you rip the lid off and dip it in. Um, um, dippets. Dippets. You can make your own dippets. Now you can use crackers and cream cheese or you could use um, the uh, breadsticks, the little mini breadsticks and Nutella or Natino or almond butter or whatever you, you like for that sort of thing. They work really well too. One of the favourite dips, oh, my kids love this dip, was cottage cheese with um, chopped mint and a drizzle of honey. And I used to beat it with the electric beater to make it smooth so that it wasn't, because they didn't like the curds in the cottage cheese. They didn't mind the flavour, they didn't mind the tartness. It was the curds they didn't like. So I would beat it with the electric beater to make it smooth, then put probably to a tub of cottage cheese, probably about a teaspoon of honey and some chopped mint. And it was really nice. And give that to them in a container and I would then um, section a mandarin and slice an apple and I'd put the apple back together with the with a rubber band around it to keep it from going brown and they could dip it into that and they love that that was really nice and really easy and cottage cheese is cheap to buy but it's really easy and quick to make at home too if you want to do your own so. Thank you, Barbara Le Snack and Dippets. There you go. You can tell I don't buy them very often because I forgot what they were called. The Le Snacks are really good. You didn't want to know because we have them at work. Oh, do you? <laughs> oh. No, they won't starve, Sarah. Um, photo and recipe for cannelloni on. Oh, thank you, Kerry. Kerry's put her cannelloni. Yum. Okay. Um, Catherine, I'm not sure what will be on Thursday's show. Uh, we're in the process of updating the kitchen at last. Yay! Um, so it's kind of messy, kind of messy. But I was thinking of doing um, some no-bake things. I want to go on with our Christmas dinner, finish that off and do the no-bake part of getting ready for it and things that we can use as dip, uh, as dips, as gifts, as well as enjoying them ourselves. I know I used to make plates of coconut ice, I do plates of caramels um, and things like that to hand to the lollipop lady and the, you know, pass to the neighbours and little things like that. And I just always just put them on a little uh, paper plate and bundled it up with cellophane and a pretty bow and tizzied it up that way. Those little boxes I found, I showed you a couple of weeks ago from the reject shop. 
I have those now, so I'll be using those for those sorts of things. Um, rumbles. <laughs> rumbles, yum. There's a really good recipe for rumbles without the rum in the um, on the oh. website. Well, we use rum essence instead of actual rum. But we're adults now. <laughs> Some of us are adults now. Okay. Um, Just can't eat them on a work night. Oh, hummus and crackers. Yes. I forgot about hummus. Again, it's um, cheap enough to buy but easy enough to make. Doesn't there's no cooking involved in hummus, it's just really easy. So yeah. Wheat big slice, yep. Um Estelle's laughing at you. <laughs> um so um those sorts of things. In the December issue of Superfood Ideas, there's a heap of recipes for truffles. Ooh, yummy. I used to make um good old apricot balls, which is just the apricots and Chopped apricots, sultanas, coconut, wheat, bix, and condensed milk, all mushed up together on balls. But I would take them one step further and dip them in white chocolate and then roll them in more coconut. Yum. So good. We also have on our website um, Karen's um, homemade Ferrero Rochers. Yum. That's so good. And I make those um, every Christmas too because they're really good. So there's all sorts of things. Toffees. Um, we've done caramel corn on the show. That's really easy. But um, oh, it's gone out of my head. The toffee with the Brazil nuts and um, 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 <laughs> I didn't have rum. Um, <laughs> Well, that makes sense, Joy. Does it not? Does it not make sense? It makes perfect sense. Um, okay, how far before Christmas is it okay to make Rocky Road? Well, it depends. How strong are you? Are you able to resist it? Rocky Road should keep in an airtight container for about a week. Um, thank you, brittle. That's it. Peanut brittle or Brazil nut brittle. Thank you, Catherine. Oh, and that's really easy to make. It doesn't take long. It's really easy to make. And it looks so nice because it's such a beautiful colour. If you let it set and then I cheat and use the hammer to sort of break it up because my thumbs aren't so good anymore. But it works really, really, really well. Tim Tam truffles, yes. Now we've sort of got Bailey's in it. Bailey's in what? The truffles. Ooh. <laughs> What was Hannah making before, by the way? She was colouring in, just trying out some um, textures, some new markers that she's got or I've got, I have for my card making. So I'm going to try colouring. I'm not a fan of colouring, folks. The They're card ladies nice. will know. Doing it now. I'm not a fan of colouring because, you know, just seriously. But sometimes a stamped image just needs colour. So... And I did try and use, I've been persevering with some old markers and things that I had, but I've obviously had them too long because most of them have dried up. So then I was trying my pencils, just it wasn't just wasn't the same. So we found some inexpensive textures that I can use. So hopefully that will be it. Florentine's my favourite biscuit, yum. Florentine's are the toffee biscuits with the chocolate on the bottom that grandma used to make. Caramel slice, um, white Christmas, white Christmas, the white Christmas cups, white Christmas in little cups, in the little mini chocolate cups is really nice. They're always really good. I have the water brush pen, Kerry. I just don't have water-based markers. I've got watercolour pencils though from Riot Art and Craft. They're only $2.95 each and don't bleed through the paper cool tombow yep okay anyway guys i'm getting the happening have people to see places to be happening so we'll be back on thursday in the well 
if you can stand if you can stand the mess in the kitchen i'll be in the kitchen um coloring yeah i'm not a fan of coloring i don't know i'm just too impatient crayola well the crayola markers were the ones i was using they were the kids because they're the ones that clip together aren't they the crayola ones no that's oh they're faber castell we had some crayola ones too and when crayola say they're washable they're not found out that the hard way but anyway now i'm moving on so hopefully maybe on thursday i'll show you some of my artwork if i get some done see how it's going i will do something but i was thinking no bake i want to finish off the christmas um menu as best i can and do some no bake things because it's coming into that time of year when it's just too hot to have the oven on but everyone wants a snack so we'll come up with some solutions for that too that won't put you over the grocery budget Okay, icy poles. Icy poles, yeah. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to give us a thumbs up. Just drop down under there and hit that thumbs up. It, it really is important to keep our ranking with um, YouTube. And, you know, makes it all worthwhile. And thank you so much for joining us again. Don't forget to pop over to the website and if you... Folks, if you aren't on our um, weekly newsletter, you don't get our weekly newsletter on a Thursday, subscribe to it. It's free. comes out and I've got a really lovely comment from a, a beautiful lady that will be in this week's newsletter. All righty. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Good night.